now uh, fresh off of his radio show in Houston, the one, the only former NFL quarterback, current all around stud. I'll just say it. The one, mm. the only Sean Salisbury. Good morning, friend. Good morning. Yeah, Jerry, 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 Jerry Glanville was not so long, and I'm getting horrible feedback in my ear. Uh oh. All right, so he's, yeah, we're he's getting all feed- that echo. We had we just had Matt Barrows on, or maybe he had the feedback too. I don't know. Uh, we're are you still getting it, Sean? Hello, hello. Yeah, good. yeah, good. all good. Okay. All good now. Yep. <laughs> Sean, I want you as is. We'll probably ask this question every week as long as he's going, but. The Brock Purdy story is beyond a Disney movie at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to stay in the moment as a fan and realize how rare and amazing this is. But screw him being pick, pick uh, the uh, Mr. Irrelevant. Screw all that. I want to ask you as a quarterback and coach, as somebody who analyzes the game, what do you see in Brock Purdy? Well, I think it's a hell of a question. Let me make one point clear. that When we label these guys who draft people experts, first off, that position – is the hardest position to um, to evaluate because we never know the, the intensity at each level, but also how they're going to be under duress until we see them under duress against grown men who do it for a living. It's different at every level, high school to college, college. And then having good players around you, how you would just – we're trying to find reasons, people are, to diminish or shrink Brock Purdy's ability. I would not, there's not, and I, and you guys know, I've talked about Jimmy. I think Trey's talented and you know, I'm a Jimmy Garoppolo fan. You, you, the, the, this is Brock Purdy's job moving forward now. And the next year, you got to take it away from him. Here's why. And then judging the position. So we got to quit giving people who evaluate it. They miss, they, they miss on guys because he was drafted late. We all of a sudden throw the stigma on him that, well, he was drafted last. So he can't be that good a player. Well, some of those executives get fired, too, because they miss on guys that they say, well, he is 5'11 or 6 foot, played at Iowa State, played good, yet he was a two-time, I think, Pac- or a Big 12 uh, quarterback, you know, all that thing, as, uh, the first team all Big 12. So the guy can play. And fortunately, like I said before, I got a guy who trains him who has told me all about him, and I've followed pretty closely, but of what kind of uh, character and what kind of toughness he has mentally. My number one trait when I'm training a quarterback or when somebody wants to come to me and ask about a kid that's want, that they want to offer scholarship to or get evaluation, you got to have mental and emotional toughness, the ability to overcome good stuff quickly and bad stuff quickly, and that's him. All the other stuff, can he throw? Yeah, he can throw it. He's accurate. He's got. Some, I don't think people realize how good his feet was until they see it in live game action because he's extending plays. And he's making the simple throw and at times making the very difficult throw. And he started slow last week and still came on and had a monster game. He gets over stuff quickly. And I mean good and bad. So I love his approach. And there, when I watch him, if you didn't tell me he was a rookie, and it's the first time I've seen him, I'd say, man, why haven't I heard about this guy who's been a league player for six years? That's how he plays. He makes – he makes – he plays – there are plenty of veterans in this league who make more mistakes than he does with the ball in their hand. But his toughness will see him through, and the great thing is he knows he's got great players around him. And I'm tired of people diminishing his performance because, well, look who he's got. Isn't that the object? Look at him. You want me to go through the Steelers when Bradshaw won them, when Montana won Super Bowls, when Troy Aikman won Super Bowls, when Elway won Super Bowls? That's the object. They have good players, and he's maximizing it. It's his job. It's not Trey Lance's. I don't care that he was a first-round pick, and I don't care that Jimmy's been there. This guy's got them playing better on offense. Sean, now conversely, a guy who's been through that battle, that test, every week for year upon year upon year and is one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time, is Tom Brady. Last night look, just didn't look the same. He, he was rushed. He was hurried. Didn't seem to trust routes himself. I, I don't know. That's one of the worst I've seen him play. Doesn't diminish anything he's done before that. But what did you see from him last night specifically? Uh, and go back this year, guys. We've seen the up and down. Listen, we look at the numbers. If you just look at the raw numbers and haven't watched, you'll say, well, damn, he threw for 4,700 yards. Last night was the most uh, I felt and I know, uncomfortable is not the right word. It hit me and I thought, Brady didn't throw it out of the end zone. He threw a pick in the end zone. Mm-hmm. I mean, here's the here's the thing, guys. And go back and watch him this year. 
when he's missed, whether it's on the wrong page of a receiver, whether it's wrong route, not getting protection, whatever it is, we complimented all forever. We also got to criticize since he's the quarterback in the playoffs. Um, Tom's misses are no longer aim small, miss small. He's, he's still a really good player. But when he misses, they're big. Bouncing balls four feet in front of him. This is, last night's the first time in his career I thought, man, this is, a, this is a hard watch in January. I don't see this from him. Do I think he could go to the Raiders or Dolphins and throw for 4,800 yards and 35 touchdowns next year? I do. But it, was, it looked a little bit like frustration, father time, and a very inconsistent sport that did not deserve to be in the playoffs if you're going by who was better than them. They just fortunately had a bad division. Brady looked last night like, okay, is it time for a coat and tie? Yet, the guy's still for 4,700 yards, and you know he'll grind. So, last night was not – we can't blame it on – Tom was a, a part of the reason why they didn't win, among other things. But we don't normally say that about him. But this has been their team all year. One week good, two weeks bad. One week good, two weeks bad. And he's the one usually pulling them out of it. He's not good enough anymore, and I, he's the best of all time. I love him. He's not good enough anymore to do what the Burroughs and Allens do of carrying a team to 13 or 14 wins by himself. He needs better personnel. And they have good personnel, but when you can't block for them, good things don't happen. Last night was a tough watch, and it's one of the toughest I've seen in a long time for him. Gut feeling, has Tom Brady played his last game? I don't think so. I would have thought he did. I think that he's going to, you know, whether it's Miami or the Raiders, I I think he's going to go now at the beginning of this year. I said this after he came out of retirement. Of course, this is his last year. But damn, when you look at it, does he want to go out like this? Or does he say, I've done it enough. I'm going to go broadcast. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what they'd probably do, reserve judgment after he takes a few weeks off. But it sounds like he's saying goodbye to Tampa. It won't surprise me. Let me say, I know it's not the answer any of us want to hear. It won't surprise me either way. This is the first year going into a season. I said unequivocally it's his last year, the very first year. And you know what? I'm not so sure I'm right on that. I'd say it's a 60-40 that he comes back for me. I haven't heard anything otherwise. Sean, what should the Ravens and or Lamar Jackson do about that pairing? Well, I would have, to me, they had to completely change. They went from Flacco to him. So think what Greg Roman and Harbaugh had to do. And it's such a good organization. They changed their offense to suit a guy who is supremely gifted and talented. And I know he wants paid. I always say this, if you're going to replace him, who are you replacing him with? Carr? Garoppolo? I mean, you start to look at, okay, then they'd have to go back and redo all that they do to – see, great coaches don't admit all the talent adjusts to them. Great coaches build something to adjust to the talent they have, and that's been the talent in the building. I would have already signed him. I think he's a dynamic player. He's got to get a little bit better from the pocket, and I, you can't sustain running the football as often as he does. There's going to have to be adjustments as he moves on in his career. But I, what's the alternative? Hell, I mean, I mean Andy Dalton, uh, Jameis Winston, and I've got mentioned Jim trading for somebody else. Carr's good. Jimmy's really good. But neither one are as dynamic, and you'd have to change everything. I can't fathom them moving on from him, but for the money he's going to command and probably should have already been paid, and with the injury situation, I think it's going to be evaluated. But you damn well better have somebody awfully good to replace him. Last thing for you, and we only have 30 seconds, Sean. I know we're always moving so quick, but with the there's there's being some stuff made in the media about the Cowboys playing late last night and then they're going in and playing the Niners on a short week, whereas the Niners played on Saturday. Again, as someone who's been in the locker room, has been through all this stuff, is that media stuff or does that have a real effect on players? Well, I, I, I think it has a real effect. First of all, the Cowboys now, they may not have time to think much about the way that they beat up on Tampa. This is a different animal. You're playing the 49ers in their building, and they are not going to make the mistakes Tampa made. And rest. At this time, rest matters. I think it's really important that for the, the, for the 49ers, I like the 49ers in the game, but if the Cowboys play like they do last night, this game will be a fourth quarter game. That's Sean Salisbury each and every Tuesday, just after 8 o'clock, fresh off his four-hour show in Houston. He comes on and does what he does. Awesome, Sean. Appreciate you. Always love talking to you. Well, I love talking to you all the time, but always love talking to you during the NFL playoffs. Have a great weekend, my man. You too, buddy. Thank right. you. Take care. That is Sean Salisbury. We're late for a break. When we come back, a number of things. We've got standings. What we really need to get the voice guy to do that was the matter. <laughs>